My wish that to all human race who's listening and watching us today, uh, I want to thank you for your consideration. My name is uh, Jean Samuel Fort uh, for Andre Zone. Andre Zone is the name of the show, but in English, I will call it Let's Reason. In Ghana, I will say Yen Toto Ejin. Uh, today, we have some guests with us. Uh, we have my brothers, Kweku Obeng Amoko. I always say Kaboom. <laughs> 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 uh, let me say Kweku is a singer, uh, an acti politician, activist politics. And then I have my brother. And remember, guys, you listen to me. I said, my brothers, my brothers, Kweku, and my brother. Robert Kusa is a developer. This guy loves to do construction like myself. We love it. And then he's a guy who loves people. He's also an activist. Uh, people would think, I mean, one, I'm one of them, who think we can make a difference in the world. And this is our mission, make the world better. Uh, guys, I, I was looking at it for so many, for so, so many years. I mean, I'm talking about 400, 401 years since they start the slavery. I mean, people, some people say, I mean, we were sold by our brothers uh, to, to the white men to be put in slave. My, my concern here, I don't know how to say that in English, excuse my English, but in Haiti as a at the time of slavery, there's a group of Africans. They used to do the dirty job for the white men, beating all the African slaves to do the work. In Haiti, they called them the, com the commander, le commander. Uh, so I'm looking at the situation right now, right here, right now, and in regard to what just happened to my brother, George Floyd, and so many others African-American. And what I'm asking myself, what can we do about it? Can we as Af African-American or can all African, because when, Kweku is with me. Let me. I forgot to tell the people. Kweku is sitting in Ghana. Africa right. is a continent, Brilliant. and Ghana is one of one of those countries sharing the African continent. So, should Africa stay silent about it? Should us, as African American, should stay silent, or we just talk? Or can we be part of those people? Who begin the solution to the problem? So uh, I'm 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 going I'm going to go straight, my brother. But I'm going to go straight to Kweku and ask him how does how does Africa receive that? What should be done? What should we do? How do you see it? Well, um, like like I was introduced by my brother John. Um, greetings, to say to the whole world. I hope we are here. That means I hope everybody is good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, t to talk from the African point of view and as a musician, um, doing reggae music and Afrobeat strictly sometime in dance hall. Um, you know, Africa plays a part in making sure that our brothers out in the West, I mean, have the backing of us in Africa because it's no fault of theirs where they are now. You, you can't blame somebody here, you can't blame somebody there. It's been a process for 401 years or so over when we've gone through this process of slavery, uh, when um, our rights have been trampled on, um, we've been called all sorts of names, we've been violently abused for so many years, and we're still facing this in this 21st century. Like you, you rightly said about George Floyd's uh, uh, unfortunate incident that's brought all this talk back again because even in Africa we still have some white people come over some um, American white people come over British or let's say even Chinese or say Indian folks looking fair come in and still abuse people here and it's gone on and it keeps going on because we are not standing up for each other we are We've been fighting this battle quite uh, segmented away from the unified body whereby Africans will stick together, defend Africa, 
home and abroad. So I think these lapses have also created that, that, that synergy whereby for so long, even though we have fought for civil rights, black civil rights throughout the 60s to now, we're still experiencing racism, you know? So from the African point of view, yes, Africa needs to play a part in supporting their brothers out there and make sure that they have the backings and the support of the motherland so that any errors, anything that has gone past by for the years that has, we've all been through this will cease. And then now the African voice will be heard out there. My brother, my, my brother I mean, uh, you listen to uh, Kweku and uh, you, you, you are living here like myself and then you don't witness, but we watch it on TV. Uh, lucky for me, I never <laughs> witnessed anything that otherwise I won't be able to talk to. And I'm not to run also. I would be running, I'm telling you. Chase me. Catch me if you can. But that'd be <laughs> I mean... Run, G, run. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, let me, let me bring something before you open uh, your opinion on that. Uh, coming in here, America, and I used to listen, never be, because I went to college, not ice cream here. Some kids from Haiti came and do college. Before, before school is over, they're watching and then start running, not to get beat up. So many, it been going on. And then uh, my thing is just like his education or my brother, I mean, <laughs> help me here. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here, especially with my brother both of you guys and <laughs> this topic is right on point we the first thing that you see when you look at each of us is melanin we don't know where we came from but we know we sure aren't european that much we can figure out that's okay we've let people find ways to divide us even back in the time as we were being brought over as slaves because that's how they got their strength. They found ways to divide us, to segment us. As Kweku had said, working together, okay? For us, if we don't allow ourselves to be segmented, we will become much stronger, and that will build the base from which we all have come from, okay? We come from a very rich tree, and I'll call that tree Mother Africa. There are many branches all over the world. As we spread out, what should happen is that those branches will take root and grow and continue to prosper for the, the greater of the whole tree, okay, and the people. But sometimes we let things break us down and segment us. So we end up having, creating issues amongst ourselves. So I'll back up and say today, when I look, I see my brothers. And I see brothers that if you did not uh, stop your car fast enough, if you did not put your hands out the window fast enough, if you're stopped by the police, Right. If you did not get into the yes or no quick, quickly enough, you would be either shot, arrested, or in some way held up because what they saw first was your color, your melanin. That which makes us the same, African. Okay. So, so the, 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 I mean, yes, we wow. are the same. Like I was saying to my personal emotion on Joy Floyd, I said, God create one race, mm -hmm. the human race. And then as I'm looking at it right now, the evolution, where we see more support from the other race. Some mm -hmm. people who understood we are one kind, one people, one world, not two worlds. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering uh, one time listening to one guy in here, I don't remember his name. He called Haiti, as all country, he called Africa, as yes, all country and <laughs> see, seriously people get so offended so upset i'm listening to my haitian was i dare you some african i dare you but what i'm saying if we get so offended can we take over can we take our situation over can we control our destiny because to me my brother robert me and you we've been with quick what is homeland Ghana, and I'm saying to everybody who's watching, Ghana is not poor. It's a rich country. Yeah. And uh, when you're looking like food, for instance, in America, they go for season. There's a season to grow your food. 
-hmm. In Ghana, you can go all year round. In right. Haiti, you can go all year round. And then when you're looking at the soil, I don't know if we, we took the trip, me and you, to Kumasi. Mm -hmm. When you enter in Kumasi, the floor is shine. Shine. Yeah. Gold on the floor. So meaning with all those mountains of millions of dollars over there, my, my question is, is there a lack of participation, a lack of action within ourselves? And can we, what should we do? Can we complain about it? Or sh should we take action? For instance, my brother Kweku singing to your music, activist politics, I think you should be wanting. Get involved into the politics and make the change. <clears throat> yeah. Um, like you're, you're, you're just articulating that. Um, should we sit and just watch? Should we just take the insult and just become um, agitated? Where I stand now say we don't have to sit no more. We've, we've actually allowed all these things to happen to us in a way, in a way that we, are, we also have contributed to it. You know, because if the leadership that we've always put out there to supervise and then, and then make sure that things are properly done have disappointed us. They've all been, in a way, uh, bought into the idea of thinking that you always need a superior help before you can materialize even what you have here. For instance, like gold mining. Um, we in Ghana, unless by um, birthright, or like uh, you're from a family that is rich uh, into industry, that's when you can actually go around a mining area or have access to mining, whereby a Chinese can just come into the country, have a little um, capital on him, whether government sponsored or family sponsored, come into the country and has adequate, adequate um, links to have even land to mine on, all like a Ghanaian that is here. So the lapses comes through from even the leadership that we've been putting out to supervise and, 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 and then go and then bargain on our, our rights, which are Ghanaians. That's why uh, DT can go out there and say we are OS, uh, whatever he's got to say, because at the end of the day, what have, what have we got to show? We've got the love, yes, we've got the human capital, yes, we've got the land, yes, we've got the brains, yes. But we haven't actually put in this to work. I was currently going through stuff and I'm, I'm now seeing that black should support black industry. Okay, blacks can only support black industry when a black industry is producing standard stuff to compete because once the world is set, there's always going to be competition. And that's what we have not been able to break through, take advantage, and then actually grow, you know? Because if you watch the world and you watch the industries and you watch all the big corporations that we're talking about, it's white owned. A few of them are black owned, which even the Africans don't even know about. Because what we get here are Chinese goods, which most of the times are 99.9 .9 inferior. <laughs> yeah. You know, just speak and, it, just speak it. Don't and, hold and, it. And, 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 it's not a Samsung, it was a Samsung. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and it's, it's so real, you know. And our governments, instead of them taking the right steps with the uh, institutions that we have to actually promote made in Africa, made in Ghana for Ghanaians, for the youth, so that we have a bit of competition from what is coming in. They also sit back and allow everything to happen so that you can have a Western leader telling an African leader what to do in this country. Mm -hmm. Because for simple, basic stuff, we have to go and borrow money. We have the gold, we have the diamond, we have the manganese, we have the water, we have the land, we have the vegetation, we have sun, 24 hours, two out of the 665 one quarter days. And what have we done to it? We've got good, Vegetal, uh, vegetable lands that we can actually plant something that we can get food to supply the world, but we don't. Abuelable lands that are there, we don't. We don't do industry, we don't do agriculture, we don't do medicine, but we're quick to go and help from somewhere else because we think that's where we, we, we can get it. Is that, is, is, is that mean, my brother, is that mean we <laughs> like consider ourselves a professional beggar? We, 
reaching out, handing our hand. Please give us something. Please, please, Mr. White Man. Uh, 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 my brother, Pusha, I mean, as you're listening, I mean, they said, Castigat Ridendo More, that's a Latin said, let's correct it in laughing. All right? Castigat Ridendo More. But it, it is very serious. It's deep. It's serious. It, it, it is deep because it's not, it's not different from every black country I step in, including Haiti. My question, I don't know if they know how to make the difference, my brother. You, may, you, you guys remember I mentioned Commander. Commander, yeah. those big black, they used to beat other, other slaves. The, I'm saying right now, there were a reason. For the reason was like, if I don't beat my brother, they will beat me. Now, why are we still doing that? And I'm referring to all black leaders. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who can say something? Can you say something to me about it, my brother? How do you say it? It's, it's a process. And with all processes, we want them to be quick, get it over with. We want it done. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way all the time. But you can make progress steps at a time. The things that are happening today with the, uh, the George Floyds and many of the other uh, atrocities that are happening to people of color uh, in this country and around the world, I think it's helping to move those steps for this process along. Because at the end of the day, I made the point at the very beginning, the first thing people see is the melon and understand that we're all out of Africa. They don't know what other country, what languages we speak, but they know where we come from, so they can use that against us. We have to turn and start using that for us. I see my brother, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am, help my brother. How can I find a way? So whether it's in Africa, anywhere in Africa, whether it's in South America, whether it's in Europe and Asia, it doesn't matter. When we see each other, we need to seek ways to find how we can work with each other. We all have issues, we all have problems that we've had to deal with, but part of that process is when you see a problem, don't get stuck on a problem, focus and turn around to a solution, okay? I don't like the way you did that. Okay, you had slavery. You know what? If there was a, you call it a commander, okay? He had a job to do at that time. Do I like it? No. The end result is I'm here, but what do we do from here? We can start from where we are and then move forward. So the resources in Ghana, let me, let me back up. I'll take Zimbabwe, for instance, okay? Having been there, uh, looking at what you see now, they're talking about food insecurity in Zimbabwe. 30 years ago, before the land redistributions, 30, 40 years, Zimbabwe was considered a breadbasket of Africa from an agricultural perspective. What changed? Ownership. The land is still there. It's still a potential breadbasket. But when they changed ownership, what the country did not bring back, they put people in place, but not people that had the experience or the knowledge. So instead of focusing on bringing in partnerships, let's just give an example. You and I, Gene, talked about this the other day. With, you have many black farmers here in the United States that would be more than happy to work with our brothers in Zimbabwe and other countries, Ghana, anywhere else, to show them some of the expertise that we've gotten at that branch that's off the root over here. We're set the branch these people from these trees, but we have a lot of knowledge and fruit that we can bring to the table to help our brothers and sisters in other areas, to help uplift them, which then uplifts us. So in Zimbabwe, why are they starving? They should not be but they haven't reached out. And the process is we have to reach back to them and say, look, we're here. Our hand is here, not as a handout, but a partnership. And I, I've always told my children, when you put your hand like this, that's a handout. Give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> just turn your hand this way, it's a partnership. So we have to find ways to turn our hand like this and say, my brother, how can we work together? What do you need that I can help you get that'll help uplift you. It will benefit me as well. Why? Because our black farmers will be producing products that can be sold not just in Africa, but also here. Start to improve our growth situation, which we then in turn can reinvest back into Africa to have it move on. And don't get me on my soapbox because I'm about to go, wow. Because <laughs> right? I have a serious point. When you look at Dubai, when you look at many of the other countries, but specifically Dubai, it's a great example that we all can grasp today. 30 years ago, not even 30, 20 years ago, Dubai was nothing but a desert. It was nothing worthwhile there. But if you go there now, you will see the 
between Dubai and Africa, Ghana, Zimbabwe, even here in parts of the United States where we can uh, collectively choose to do something. That's different. They chose to do something. They chose to work with their resources, work together, and move their collective city to a point where it became state of the art. I think as we go through the process with my brother Kweku and other enlightened people and yourself, we can do the same thing. We can but choose to work together to work through that process. The, the, the question, again, was really killing me. Education people said, we have so many black entrepreneurs like yourself, construction, engineering like myself. We got so many with the moolah, the money, the piss whip. <laughs> you know, oh, they got the money, but um, the intention. So what, what we get lost in there? I mean, Robert, I, I didn't call you. I mean, I'm not talking to you because you're not running for president. So many presidents, my president in the 80s, so many. Ways. We didn't call you to run for president. You run for president. You decide, you take that responsibility to make a change. Mm -hmm. Why they are so silent? Is the, the, the grid commanders, I got to have it all, forget you? And then in the line of business, as I will say, I said that to somebody. Uh, he said, okay, I sell like 50, 50 cars in Haiti a month or a year. As about if you help develop Haiti mm -hmm. from 50 cars to 1,000 cars, you see the difference? Because one witness, uh, I mean, hey, if I offered anybody, that's your problem. I used to be hosting a soccer event on summertime in here. The, the time it was like to get it is five dollars. Just five dollars. They used to have thousands of people going there having fun. The soccer was good, sometimes not good, but you know, just the fact we can get together right. and then. Long time I don't see, I'm waiting for the summer to, to be one of my friends. I don't see for a long time. Now they bring it to $20. $20, you got 100 people. $5, you got 2,000. $5 times 2,000 give you 10,000. 20, 200 give you 200. Is that I am stupid or I, I don't know what I want? I don't want to change. This is the question I'm asking myself with our leaders. And the other question, how much money do you need to be rich? Or are they gonna be poor forever? No matter how much money they got, they can make the difference between poor and fortune and making them for themselves. Is there anything you guys can tell me about it, please? I'm trying to understand. I um, just can't, I just can't. Let, let me chip in what I feel or what I think or what I have experienced. Um, with the kind of leadership that we have always putting out all the leaders that have brought themselves up for the tax. One, we have not actually understood what these people came up with, like what the ideas that they were coming up to this politics with. So we have ignorance, one, leading us in choosing leadership. People just get a little money in their pocket and they can go and then elect anybody out there. People can just say, oh, because I'm tribal, I'm Akan, I'm this, I'm that. So I'm going to vote for this person and this person because he's not this person. We do it here. That's why I told you, once we group in segments, we're allowed to be segmented and divided and then push aside and don't focus on one big dream or one unifying team whereby we all, melanin skin, it doesn't care whether you're from Ethiopia, you're from Zimbabwe, you're from whatever. Once you know your melanin, we buy into each other, we support each other, we grow each other, we vibe, we, we, we exchange knowledge based on all the experience that we have so that we can move this melanin skin from the bottom where they put in us to the top where we actually belong. Because we are not the tail. If you watch the structures, we are never the tail. We are actually the head because once we have a good soil that you can plant 20, 360 around the year, shows that this is, this is paradise. This is where it is. But if you sit down and then everything is given to you, like Robert said, you always have your hand out and 
you're not your hand isn't straight to shake up a hand and say okay now we have a business this is what we're going to do and right you say okay give me water oh give me shirt okay give me bread okay once you you're being given you're being dictated to and and and, and it goes from the top straight to the bottom this so is then we said to I always said that to people could be like if i'm paying your salary i'm going to dictate you what to do because you're working yeah. for me yeah. sure is is a ta- is a paid slave is is slave anyway but is paid so now again i'm still confused i took i choose to be a leader maybe you kweku maybe some friend of mine who are listening right now i know they are listening so many of them maybe they should take the lead lead for a change lead to bring something not lead to be rich and then my question i'm looking hady myself i am in hady i got 200 dollars in my pocket 200 dollars can give me a week easily no issues no problem and i can live like a king i'm in ghana 200 dollars time like 200 dollars will give me 400 uh, well, right now you're going to get 1200 like now you're going to get uh, 1200 ghana cedis for that hallelujah that's okay. how bad it's gone yeah see wow. <laughs> so that's like how bad they're going to hold on to those puppies <laughs> <laughs> right now when you have 200 dollars on you in ghana right now it's 1200 cedis that you have in your pocket well we're talking quite few years we was in ghana it was 400 there was 200 um, it was like there was two dollar, uh, yes a dollar was for like two cedis two cedis for a dollar yeah right not is in the thousand since this new guy and and, and and now you need you need six cds for a dollar wow okay well then i guess my cds aren't worth anything now <laughs> 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 i think i had about 400 that i was holding on <laughs> you can stick that in the mail to you man you can... <laughs> i know you're gonna come up with... i know you're gonna come up with... <laughs> yes yeah, that's the sad <laughs> stuff you know this is what I, was, I kept telling you before the 2016 elections we, we were paying three three cities uh 90 pesos for a dollar so the incoming government and its policies and its uh manifesto said that when they come they're making they're making sure the dollar is not going anywhere they're going to arrest the dollar they're going to keep it stable and now we're at six cities okay and, and there's no explanation you go and they tell you the world market and, but right now, you know what is happening in Ghana? We're trying to find out how we can print our own money. Because every time we need money, we have to come to the West. And then they print money, and then we bring it here. And it also adds up to inflation. And there's this capital flight. The, the big corporations in Ghana, like the Talo Oils, the Anglo Golds, and the, the big, big corporations, they don't save money in Ghana. So there's always capital flight at the end of the year that takes a hooping amount of Ghanaian and money convert into dollar and send to the offshore. That's when the drops come in our currency. See, I mean, just uh, I read it. I didn't listen to this guy saying, uh, Mr. Putin from Russia said, our leaders consider our country like a cemetery. They make their money. They send it, like you just said, to, to, to the shore, outside of the country. They send their kids to study outside of the country. Outside the country. They invest their money outside of the country. Outside of the country. When they die, they want to be buried in Africa. You know what? Yes, in our country. Stay, stay yeah. where you are. Stay, don't come back. We're not cemetery. <laughs> but again, let's, this, is so, this is so sad. The question is, I'm asking, I've been asking myself, like in Haiti, there's so many talented, intellectual, highly advanced, knowledgeable person in Haiti. I don't see them in politics. I see those critics. I see them talking, all right, this guy is not doing it. But why you stay on the side? Because in, 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 in melanin countries, when you go into politics, you are, you are likely to be to, uh, to be targeted. Is it that you're going to collapse your, your, your company? 
when your government is not in power or whoever you supported to come to power is not in power, you will be frustrated. This is one thing that is affecting growth in our country. Just look what you said. Because what? If they find out, okay, you are this MPP and then NDC, right? So, okay, these are the two parties that are actually coming into power every time. So and, 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 you MPP, are, MPP for the yes. John Mahama and then the... No, um, John Mahama is for the NDC and then Nana Kofado for the MPP. So, if you're for the MPP and then NDC comes to power, there's something called retaliation. They're making sure that they're collapsing businesses that are owned by MPP. Big, everything that they could do to, so that you cannot come back to power. Subsequently, if the other does so, same routine is done. This is one thing that business people have never loved to join into politics or even civil society doesn't want to come into politics actively because it's such a dirty, dirty adventure you putting your face out for one party. Our elections don't build. It destroys. That's what I've realized for the past 24 years in Ghana democracy, what I have seen. Well, is, isn't that a question of vision? Go ahead, Robert. Building on what my brother said, if we're looking for a solution, it means we be aware of politics, but we elevate above it. Yeah. There's something that's universal outside of politics, and what's that? Business. Yeah. If we decide to ensure, like I said at the very beginning, I'm looking for ways to find how to get around a problem, to work together instead of finding ways to bring a problem to separate. So if we use business as one of those platforms where we can find a way to work together, instead of collapsing that business, it's like, okay, party changes. What do you sell? You sell furniture? Let's speak with our brothers in the States here, see if they can go out to the various communities, see who wants to get some furniture and buy directly from our brothers over there, the furniture. You follow? Whether it's the furniture or foods or whatever the case may be. If we use the internet and the fact that we all look alike as yeah. a benefit or to our benefit, we can then do more to help each other out and be less dependent on what the other people think or do. And when I say other people, you know what I mean. I'm saying <laughs> we can solve this problem ourselves yes. if we choose yes. to. And no, it's not easy. It is a process. It's going to take multiple steps, but we have to take one step at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you raise the people up? One step at a time. How do you determine not to go backwards? Don't let anyone or anything knock you off your square. If your square is get together and let's move forward, whatever happens, if somebody did something wrong, we work through it, we work by it, we work beyond it, but we do not stop. We do not do like you said, Kweku, where the, a new government comes in, so they're going to tear down all the others. You can never move up. So you always are at this point, which is why in many places, not just in Africa, but here in the States, you, you, I call them poverty pimps. You have certain people that are out there in position their job is not to help elevate you. It is to maintain the status quo because that's their job and that's how they make money. But we have to choose to come together at whatever platform, business, social, any platform where we say we're going to work together regardless of the obstacles and elevate ourselves beyond it. We've done it before. Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, we've done it before, okay, in many other places, and we have the opportunity to do that now. Again. We have no choice. Because I don't want anybody's neck on my throat, okay, just because of the color that I am. But if I don't have economic prosperity to be able to affect everything around me, like you said, I'm subjugated. They're paying my paycheck, so okay, okay. Oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> well, again, uh, let, me, let me say sorry to the world because, uh, because of Corona, that's why me and uh, my brother... <laughs> my brothers are here because uh, uh, me and my brother were supposed to be in Haiti. We're supposed to be always in Africa because we do have backup. We got the Black Farmers Association with us. And I forgot to mention my brother do help people, you know, into finance. How to make your money, make more money for you. As long as you into humanitarian stuff, helping others. This is our motto. This is what we live by. This is what we want to do. 
I got an experience in, in Ghana I want to share with you quick. While I was at Adodo Hotel, that's my favorite in Ghana. You yeah, yeah, I know your hotel. That's my favorite. <laughs> right? I know your hotel. Yeah, you want to love Kanesi, I know. I yeah, know. because my brother, my brother Robert would say to me, oh, I mean, why don't you drop me in Holiday Inn? I don't like fancy. I like, I love my hotel. <laughs> my brother, how much you pay? 350 US dollars, I pass. Yeah. I want to pay in cities. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's a time I was over there and trying to make a transaction, a gold transaction. I went to those people. Guys, I want you to help me understand that. I've seen that in Haiti. I wasn't expecting to see that in Ghana. Talking to those guys, they said to me, where's your boss? Meaning, because I look like them, I basically don't sound like them. Because, you know, my, you remember my secretary, Cynthia, she called me white man because I don't sound like her. And I'm not a white man. That was, that was offended. I was offended by it. But again, <laughs> there's nothing I can do. The guy said to me, was your boss? So for me to buy gold from him, I have to bring a boss. I went in Accra at the, the, the center of Accra, where you got the mall, Accra Mall. Right, right. I find a white man there. I don't know, I get, I don't know how he get lost in Ghana. He was there. I bought him a used suit, a used shoes. I dressed him up and I bring him. The, this is my boss. I made the deal. But guys, I'm laughing about it. But it's serious. How do we come down to from slavery? We get free. We're not slaves no more. We still keep the slave mentality. All right. And, um, in, in Ghana, you know, we're still colonized because we're still um, educated with the same colonial setup that we have. So like Rob is saying that now uh, the solution can't happen overnight. And it takes platforms like this, like the one you're creating, to keep people aware of what the issues are and how we should emancipate from the old ways that, we, that has kept us under that white man, boss, black man, subordinate issue. Even with you having to go on a gold deal, they're asking you, where's your boss? Because they want to see a fancy, fair, white man supposed to be the boss with the dollars. You know, not a black Malawian man like you and I from Kanishi, North Kanishi, <laughs> to, come, <laughs> to come and, <laughs> and make huge, huge business. They will underrate you. They will underestimate you. Just the looks, though, we are near Bruni. Oh, this one is not a white man. You know, all they're waiting. That's why I'm telling you, the Chinese can come here, an Indian can come here, just because he's a light skin, he's a Bruni, he's a white person. And then he goes away with everything, everything. No, we have to now embrace ourselves, appreciate ourselves, and now work together to build that black community. Like he said in uh, Oakland, they had a black Wall Street. We can have an African Wall Street mm -hmm. that actually does commerce and then everything, e-commerce, commerce itself and business by African Wall Street. African uh, will have his own bang, 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 we'll call our own monies and all that. So this is the time that we have to find ways of uplifting and enriching the melanin, you know, by, by having corporations that link black people or Africans together to, to because uh, like Rob said, if you are still financially slave, it's just like you're still a slave. You have to be financially this thing, um, on, 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 not, not a slave financially, but you have to get money so that you can actually do what you got to do or else you're still enslaved when there's no more slavery. You, are no, you have to be financially free to actually get what you want. And then this is the only way we can find solutions on platforms like this. Like you're giving us an opportunity for the world to even hear that a musician in Ghana has so much that he can, he can contribute politically that will strengthen us financially. So it's a great thing that we're doing. And we keep on like this, a lot of more Africans are going to be enlightened and then they can join into the revolution that actually emancipates us financially, not just our normal freedoms or civil rights and then all that. We need the financial emancipation as well, which is dollars. 
or African money. <laughs> so brother, it, just to throw in, I'm going to call it a financial protest. Okay. Rioting yeah. and all of this, but let's do financial yeah. protest. And that's yeah. the type of protest I want to see where we yeah. are speaking and determined to find a way for us to benefit from it. Okay. Yeah. That's a financial protest. So for example, I'm going to protest right now. My brother Lingua Cut has some great t-shirts. I need to get a couple of them. Gene, make sure you put a link to them. Show your shirt. Lingua Cut, okay? Yes. All right. He's got a great shirt, Lingua Cut with his logo, <laughs> and he's got another one that has the uh, two lion heads on. You have one of those handy, okay? Because that's a gorgeous shirt. And uh, the ones with the lion head, put a link on your page. That's a cool logo, okay? The Kaboom Nation. Now, okay, okay. now that one, I, that one I will buy because I like Kaboom. <laughs> and that's my point. That's my point. So make sure that you put a, I'm, I'm protesting now. Make sure that you put a link on the site, okay? So folks can order the shirt for my brother in God. And those are high quality shirts, okay? Yeah. That's a, an yeah. example of us protesting to help each other instead of just complaining about a problem. Because I know we got Thank a problem, you. but if we work we together, do? we're going to do a solution. This is, this is why I came back, because uh, I left television for a good 12 years. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was with my brother in Ghana. He had a song, Adore. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song, Pretty Girl, Wine Your Waist. Everybody who knows me <laughs> knows I love the whining song. <laughs> and I remember... Uh, Robert, you was with me in Ghana back, back then, right? Yeah. And I said, if I'm back on TV, the first music I will play from, if we cannot put that wine stuff on my on my platform, I'm not playing you, period. <laughs> <laughs> See, we've been we going back and forth. We, we did so many try out, but uh, I'm hoping we get success in what I'm trying to do. Educate people. I mean, it's based on love. Love yourself. Support mm -hmm. me. Because I was, I, was, I was reading on Facebook. There's a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jim Jean-Pierre. He said to me, yes, black men love to support you when you made it. Till you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, didn't, I didn't put too much on his page. I said, yo, 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 man, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> And inside of me, I was laughing, and this is so true. And this is hurting at the same time. So what we're trying to do, like you, you brought it up, uh, my brother Kusar, he have a nice T-shirt. And I've seen some Haitian with some T-shirt with like uh, the Neg Mao, which we don't have a chance to talk about, time of slavery. Mm -hmm. Those guys who kidnapped, take it no more. They, they went and hide in the bushes. They call them Neg Mao. I don't have to trust it. I don't ask me to trust it in English. They're just waiting to hide it. All right. But there's a status in Haiti showing the neg marron. And some people make some t-shirt. It's beautiful. But you know what? I don't see Haitian buying it either. And then the James Jean Pierre was right when he said, Yeah, I will support you when you reach. Do we have to fake it? Do we have to lie to ourselves? What can we do? Again, guys, I'm asking questions. I know people are listening. Somebody got the answer. We will come back to you and listen to your answer. That's no issues. This is my, my boy, my panel, my brothers. I can get it anytime I want to. All right. So if you have something you can tell me, we will be listening. So, I mean, we're not concluding because we will never, never ending anything like that. But let me say, uh, what would be the best tip of advice to give to our brothers? Those who go and vote. What do we vote? We vote the person or we we vote his intention, his ideas. What do we vote with? For instance, in, in my case in Haiti, uh, 2,000 good, which is almost nothing. It, uh, for a dollar is 92, 92 goods, pretty good 100. For 2,000 good, you buy a vote. And I'm saying to everybody who does that, if I'm running as a candidate and I pay you for your vote, don't expect me to do nothing. I put money, that's an investment. I got to make my money back. 
first benefit. When I got too many benefits, maybe, and maybe I will think about you. But if we in Ghana or in Zimbabwe, in the South Africa, we voting a conscience, we, we, we voting somebody who have a thought, is thinking that's what we would like to see. If we vote that, I think that will be a big difference onto other, those people making the rules in my country, in my Africa. What is your thought on that, Robert? I agree. Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the vote because that's, that's a difficult uh, subject in our community here in the country because many of us believe that our vote doesn't count. And I'm telling you for a fact, it does. So whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. I mean, plain and simple, you can't tell some people fat meat is greasy, all right? But it is. And <laughs> your vote does matter. And whether you realize it or not, it does matter or your lack of a vote, which is also a vote, okay, it matters. So I tell my people, take the time to look at it, look at the candidates, engage first of all, and treat it responsibly. All right, not to change subjects, but I, I have to say this quickly. When we were in Accra, uh, it was at the election time, um, I think it was 15, give or take, 14, 15. No, no 12. 12, was it, okay. All I know is I was impressed at the, 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 the voter polls because you had people lined up. And when I asked you, and I never forgot, I said, you know, what, you know, what's your, your, the percentage of people that come out to vote? You said, well, at least 80, 85%. I said, what? 80, 85% turnout for an election in the United States is ridiculous, okay? You would be happy in, in many areas up in Philadelphia, we'd be happy during a primary election to get 15, 20, 25%. During the Obama election, his first one, we, because I was on a poll, we had maybe 65% turnout. And that was historic in our community. So a lot of us do not believe that our vote makes a difference, but it really does. And I, I appreciate countries like, like uh, Ghana, where people know and they take that responsibility very seriously. They will get out there, research the candidates, and vote. For us here in the States, we have to do the same, but understand that vote will make a difference, but it's like I said at the beginning, some things are a process. You may not get your guy in the first time, okay? But if you give up, you never will get your guy or gal in. So you have to understand that support the people that will support what you're trying to do. If they don't win, fine. Find another candidate that you can support and help, but you have to vote you have to engage, you have to be responsible, because the only way that you can stop, from a political perspective, people putting their, their knees on your neck is to, as I've told my sons, you have to vote for the, the, the city council person, because they're the ones who vote in uh, for the mayors. They're the ones who vote in for the police commissioners. They're the ones who actually oversee the police departments who can make a change in that, that, that training to educate the police to not be always kill, kill first, okay? Change them from police officers to public safety officers where their focus is for the safety of the public to de-escalate a problem instead of escalating. But that's, again, election, voting. People have to engage because it's a small thing that makes the big. So if we're willing to engage and vote on our local level, all the way up to the national, find the people that you can support. If you don't have one there, do it yourself or find someone that you can work with and help uplift them. Goes back to our theme. We are a brother's keeper coming together. The strength that we don't have, you bring another to the table that does and then elevate them. Fair enough? But yes, we have to vote. We have to engage. That, that's, that's fair. For instance, uh, when the Kirk said 85%, mm -hmm. uh, if this guy is not doing his job, he knows we're going to vote him out, right? Right. But the, 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 the question is, I don't know, I never really get into deep politics in Ghana. In Haiti, I listen and hear, people vote for 2,000 good, and nobody is doing nothing. Nobody have any intention to do nothing. And 
we complain, we yell, we scream, we manifest, we take the street. And I, I've been saying to everybody, screaming, yelling, cursing, ain't gonna make the change. What do you do about it? What can you do about it? And I know so many, so many of my brothers, so many highly educated with some good visions. Let's about we black brothers and sisters take that into our hand. Whomever are in politics, you got the vision. Me and my brother Robert and my brother Kirk also, we got the possibility. Like we, they will say in, in free time, money day. The money is there. But for us to use the money, we have to have the, the, the project the option to use it for you, to help you make it happen. But if I'm going to Haiti, and then for me to sit with Kweku, who, who's the president of Haiti, I got to pay Robert to, for me to see you. I don't want to do that. Uh, Robert said, I mean, you want to see the president? Give me $2 million. I got to be out of my mind. And it, it, that happens so often where people with good intention will go and walk away. And then this is what I call absent. You're not there. A politician, they're not there. A visionist, people who are supposed to be looking and doing first, they're not there. We got to put them there. And in Ghana, if 85% go to vote, Ghana can make a change. We should learn from that. And the one thing I always say to, to everybody, my brother, let me use that to say that. Haiti, the first black country free. I'm not saying independent, because we're not. When you are independent, like we talk about, I have to have my own money. I have to, I have to have right to my own decision. Free country. And back in the day, for instance, in 1824, Haiti was proclaimed independent in 1800. In 1806, 1824, 6,000 African Americans moved to Haiti, warning from whatever was happening, still happening in here. The difference was, wasn't made because we're still in the same boat. Different type of slavery, but slaves anyway. And then I'm talking to all those black politicians, Guinea. Mr. Conte, if you're listening, I'm talking to you. All right. Take your responsibility in hand. Isa, I know you are listening right now from Niger. Isa speaks French, not English, not English, but understand perfectly English. And I know my brother Isa is into politics, not Tom Tucker, because I forgot to invite him into that panel. Right? Isa understand English. You an activist politics, politicians. Let's take the list and make the change so we can stop people from calling us as all country because we are not. Again, we are because we decide to dirty our own country. I, I've been saying to people, if you come to my house, my house is clean. I will not allow you to dirty my house. But first and foremost, I have to keep it clean. <laughs> We're calling a politician, a black politician, go take a shower, clean yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, guys, what you have to say, if there's anything more we, to, we want to add, um, so we give up yeah, today. I, 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 I was going to say that, yeah, we have actually a great number of people going to the polls to elect presidents out here. Uh, but we have equal challenges. Um, like you said, uh, vote buy-in, vote Reagan, uh, manipulation, violence to become to, to, to take over the power reign it's here uh, and and leadership is something that if we're able to actually get the right people up there people who are selfless people who are patriotic people who are um industrious people who are visionary people who are ready to take a step at a time to make sure that they're doing the right things i know i pray that yes our struggle will, in a step-by-step -step procedure, be realized. Even if it's not in our lifetime, 
it will be realized, which will go a great way to act, actually comprehend or complement what we all put out here. Because in my country, whether it's MPP, whether it's NDC, they all do vote by. Because they know that keeping the people very poor, even the politicians know, that once they keep the, the majority of the people poor, they can actually control their minds and all. You okay. buy them, like you were saying, six CDs for one dollar. So you give somebody 12 CDs, that's two dollars, he can go and vote for you. And if you're from a strike, he can go and vote for you. And if he feels that you're a rich man and he's a poor man and he can get help from you, he can vote for you. Vote actually is not really based on policies or on competencies of whoever the leader is. So you realize that all the time there's so much spin and there's so much tension when it comes to election time. We've been able to go through four or five successful elections because we've had past that we don't want to visit. But if we don't take time, we might not sustain what we have right now because from where I stand, I still see the injustice committed here, police brutality being committed here, police, I mean, there's so much. What we have to do, like Rob said, is to get the right people in there, which will always, if it's not now, it should be tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or the next year, which will always keep trying. And I mean, educating folks, you know, we don't, the mass media is so confusing. If you leave everything to the mass media or the private media, we will be going nowhere. We as oh. individuals out of businesses and other things should get involved by creating that education and advocacy to uplift everybody's brain so that we can uplift their brain to uplift their pockets, uplift their livelihoods. And then now we can get quality leadership whereby when we put somebody there, we can attest that yes, this my brother is going there not because he wants to get his family as the first citizen of the country so he's rich, but he's going there because the drains, the streets, the businesses, the housing, the jobs, these are things that my brother or my sister is going to address, which will actually affect the population, not just a few sector of people, party member or party groups, and then we're assaulted. The solutions have to come just as the way we're facing all these other things, situations that we have. That's my little thing that I'll leave before my battery runs. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, Ra yeah. your last word, please. <laughs> I'm in agreement with you guys. And I'm an eternal optimist because we can make whatever changes we choose to make. So my final thought will be choose. Choose to make a difference and then find a way to make that happen. It is that simple. Choose to make a difference and then find a way, all right? And I'll leave it at this. I, I, <laughs> all right, I don't know if you remember that, but if you're walking down the street and you saw a dollar and a pile of dog crap, would you pick it up? Most people would say no. I would say Again, yes. if you're walking down the street <laughs> and you see a $10 bill, and a pile of oh, dog okay. crap, would you pick it up? Again, most oh, people would okay. pause it. Nah, nah. If you're walking down that same street and you see a hundred dollar bill and a pile of dog crap running oozy, oozing flies all over it, would you pick it up? Most people then stop. They think about it and say, yeah, yeah. What's the difference? They look at the value. The value was the most important thing. A dollar wasn't valuable enough for them to change their thought process to, man, that stinks, I wanna do it. $10, maybe, but $100, oh now, you're thinking about what you can do with that $100. So all of a sudden it's like, not, I don't like that. It's like, let me get a plastic bag, I'm gonna grab it and wrap it over, let me get a hose and some bleach, I'm gonna spray it down. The value is there for that $100, so your thought process changes from, I don't like this, to what do I have to do to clean this up? That's the choice that we have to make. I call it the crap theory because plain and simple, what's the value in our success and our elevation? What's it worth to you? How much crap are you willing to go through to change your thought process from I don't want to deal with it to let's find a way to make this work because I see the value. I'm done. 
<laughs> uh, in those in those words, uh, my brother, I say thank you, Kweku. I say thank you, and then we will get back again to that. And let me tell you, we're gonna be on YouTube. I'm gonna put it on YouTube also, so people can comment and stuff like that. And thank you for your time, guys. And I'm hoping everybody who's listening learns something from it. We can make the change. Is up to us, not up to them. Choice. Very good. Thank you, my thank brother. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Quentin, you. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Brother Gene, take you care. All right. You got to yeah. be good. All right. Bless. Bless.